we're going to start working with ARIMA models and we're also going to start working with data today in the lab. So let's start off with the, the big picture. So let's imagine we have some data. We're going to call this X, XT. It's a time series. And we could describe that data which with some mean trend and some error. Let's imagine that this data are like, um, you know, there's just some points there and we've got that M is a line that's kind of going through the middle of those points. As fisheries biologists or ecologists, we often want to know what that line is that goes through our points. We're going to be doing something with that line. And that line is often our main goal. That's that's what we're about. We're trying and we're trying to understand how you know what what factors influence that line. But for today, let's <coughs> let's say that we didn't care about that line. That our only goal was to predict the next data point. So we really only care about forecasting. So how would we go about that? So there's kind of two basic approaches that we could use. And the first approach is what we're going to be using in the rest of the course. It's not what we're going to be using today or for lab one. Um, that first approach is that we would try to come up with a model for that mean. Now, um, what's an example of that model? Like, well, you've done linear regression, right? We could have a bunch of covariates. And so we try to explain the mean of our data with the covariate values, maybe temperature, salinity, or other species present, whatever. We do some kind of multivariate regression to predict that mean, and that becomes our model for that n. So we could do a forecast by having some model for m by some method, and then once we have that model, we use that model to make a prediction of the mt at mt plus, at time t plus one, and then we can make a prediction of xt at the next time step. So we're going to predict the mean. Um, so that's one part of it. We need to get that mean, but that's just going to get the mean. But we also could have a model of the error. So maybe that error isn't actually white noise. Maybe it's correlated in some way. And we can use that information to get a better estimate of what the error will be at the next time step. So that's kind of approach number one. Approach number two is Box Jenkins. And this approach is totally different. Okay, totally different. Now, keep in mind that I don't care what that mean line is. Okay, that is not what I'm trying to do. The only thing that I am trying to do is I'm trying to predict the next time point. So with this approach, what I could do is I could keep differencing my data until I got a new transform stationary time series. Mark showed you examples of stationary time series. They kind of, you know, fluctuate around a flat, a flat level. And the cool thing is that if you basically start differencing any time series, you will eventually get to something that is stationary. And as Mark mentioned, it usually only takes two differences, three at, at the most, but that's pretty unusual. Um, why is that? Well, you can think of that differencing kind of similar to doing a kind of piecewise linear approximation. It's kind of the similar idea. So anyhow, you're going to get this 
difference data set that is now stationary. And it turns out that any stationary time series can be modeled as an ARMA model, as an ARMA process. Those are the types of models that Mark was talking about. It's a combination of the AR part and the MA part. So now what we do is we fit the ARMA model to that difference data. So now we've got step two. Okay, great. Well, now that we have an estimated ARMA model, we can use that model to predict the next xt, xt at t plus one. Great. Okay. But um, what we really want is we want the prediction of xt plus one, right? We didn't want the, the difference. We've just, now we've just gotten to here. Now we didn't need to do one more step. Well, this difference here, you can rewrite that as a function of xt, t minus 1, t minus 2, etc. So that what we do is once we have this, we're going to put in these pass values and that um, and then we're going to be able to solve for the x t plus 1. It's kind of tedious, but it's just some algebra. Um, also, packages are going to do all that work for us. Okay, so that's the approach here with the box Jenkins. It's actually super clever if our goal is to just get the x estimate of x t plus 1. So um, let's be really clear on what this sort of delta, these differences is are. This is the first difference. It's x t minus x um, t minus 1. That's the first one. A second difference would be the first one, first difference minus the first difference at the previous time step. The third difference would be same thing here. You know, it's looking like that. And then if you did the algebra here, you would see that, okay, let's just do this one. I kind of do it in my head here. So this is xt minus xt minus 1 minus um x t minus one um, minus x t minus two so that should be x t minus two times x t minus one plus um, x t minus two okay so you see you just kind of go through that algebra again thankfully programs are going to take care of all that algebra for you so um, the nice thing about this is that in this approach, with all that differencing, we got rid of that mean level. We just, it's gone. We don't even have to care about it. Um, and that's okay because we didn't care about the, that mean level in the first place. All we want to do is predict the next t plus one, the, the next, uh, not t, sorry. We want to predict the next x. So x t plus at t plus one. So here's an example of that differencing to get rid of the wiggliness. So I started off with this, and now I take the first difference of this. So this is the plot of x t minus x t minus it. <laughs> x at time t minus x at time t minus 1. You can see it was just one of them. It got rid of a lot of that wiggliness. And then I do a second difference. Got rid of that. Okay, so now it's just two of them got pretty flat. Now, one issue with these ARIMA models, like they're really good for the forecasting, um, you know, if we just want to forecast one time step ahead, but getting a biological interpretation is hard. Um, the by doing all that differencing, we, we're really changing the error structure. So it's like we're getting these sums and differences of <laughs> our errors of these additive things. And um, 
so that it's, it's kind of hard to interpret that. And then we have our our fees, our weightings. It's the weighting on these differences. Again, that makes it kind of hard to um, to create a biological interpretation. Okay. But remember, the goal wasn't to get that underlying mean and trying to understand that mean. It was just trying to make a prediction for the next time step. Here are the basic steps, again, for fitting a ARIMA model. We're going to make the data stationary. Then we fit an ARMA model to the difference data. And then the next step, we're going to estimate those ARMA parameters. And then using the ARMA predict the ARMA model, we then predict x at the next time step. And then we'll do some residuals um, assessment, make sure that our estimated model from up here doesn't have any problems. Now, what we're going to be doing today is one approach for dealing with non-stationary time series. So this, this, all this differencing that we're doing is getting rid of all that wiggly non-stationary stuff in our data. There are other approaches to doing that and in the rest of the course we're mainly we are going to just be using these other approaches. Obviously regression is one approach. You try to explain that um, that wiggly line with some covariates. And I say here that we won't cover this. Um, we're not going to be doing classic multivariate regression in this class because we're doing time series models. We'll definitely be using covariates. One approach is something called um, dynamic linear regression. This is actually very similar to multivariate regression, but we allow the influence of the covariates to change through time. We're going to talk about those models. We're going to do a lot of what's called the stochastic level models, where we model that underlying trend, that non-stationary trend, with some kind of random walk. And we will also use something that's called a Armum uh, X model. And that is, um, it's a kind of time series model where it's like a random walk, but where you're, the jumps in the random walk are being, so the errors are being explained by some covariates. Okay, so that's our basic introduction in class. Um, I'll talk some more about this. I'll show you some examples and I'll discuss how, um, how, especially how like this approach at the bottom is different from a multivariate regression.